Greetings, everyone. I am thrilled to be in conversation again today with Rory Duff. And thank you for being here, Rory. Thank you, Heather. It's my and I, I won't give a long introduction because I've talked to Rory before and talk about you in multiple videos, Rory, about your work. Um, but for those of you who aren't familiar with his work, he's a geobiologist and a leading pioneer in understanding the earth energies and energy ley lines. He's also started uh, an incredible website, The Sacred Network, which we'll be talking about today. And he's also the author of many books, including two of my favorites, Grail Found and Grail Bound. And I hear you're writing a new one, Grail Ground. It's coming. Uh, it, it's been. Not, it might be a year or two yet, actually. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, 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 it's about the connections between all these uh, sites on the, on the sacred sites map on the sacred network. We have about a two hundred and thirty uh, sites now on on the map in Europe and uh, in America. Um, but what's not able to be put on that map are the lines that connect them up. And when you start looking at the alignments that these lines are on, at least these, these symmetrical sacred sites are on, they're just phenomenal how, how, what connects connects these lines up uh, and how human consciousness connects these lines up and even how our lives even connect up with them. It, it, it just beggars belief. I, I might I might mention one later, but uh, Bill too, but that that that'll come out in in, in the book Grail Ground and just to show the the sacredness of ground and where it is and and, and explaining some of these wonderful alignments. But um, there's a bit more work to be done. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, let's start, Rory, with updating us in terms of. I mean, you have done such amazing work in monitoring how these energy ley lines are shifting as we're moving through this incredible transition time. So can you talk some more about that and how those energies are impacting us? Yeah, um, I, I do need to, 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 to mention it's not just myself. I mean, if I find something strange, I, I alert a few people that I know in different parts of the world to check the lines and, and see what they're finding. And if they find something which is a bit different, they, they tend to sort of wing me a message and, we, we sort of feel our way forward with regards to what we're seeing because these these energetic chimes are changing. It's amazingly dynamic. And anyone who thinks that they, they've measured an energy line, you just need to think, well, this is a snapshot in time. It really is. You need to measure it every hour almost and and, and then going back into the, into the days and, uh, and, and, and get to know it before you can begin to see, well, what are the rhythms and the cycles that they go through, which they do? And then, wow, that's different. You know, and then, and then we have to keep bearing in mind that this this snapshot too has only been you know since since twenty last twenty twenty five years uh, of really uh, analyzing it, which is which is no no sense of time at all in the grand cycles. Um, but um, to come to your question, it, it, everything seemed to change in two thousand and seventeen uh, when the, there was a sudden increase in, in, in energy. Uh, typically, we, we think it's cosmic energy that increased um, because our, our magnetic fields were lowering, but also because the, this thing called a galactic current sheet was coming along. And the first thing we, re we recognized was uh, the lines all doubled in their widths, um, which was a bit of a shocker. And then we came across uh, three more emperor dragons, the type type uh, five lines. When there were three before, which we'd mapped back in 2011. Uh, 2012 and then come 2017 we now have three more and and we mapped those and uh that seemed to be a, a reflection of new sources of galactic energy that had, could now get through the interstellar magnetic fields um and essentially hit our atmosphere and and, and the thinking behind it is that once it hits atmosphere the cosmic energy is split into gamma ray radiation and neutrinos the neutrinos are high energy particles which go straight through the earth but they're slightly uh, in, uh, diffracted by the hard solid iron nickel inner core 
which is acting as a transducer, and that converts that energy into uh, spherical vibrations, very, very low vibrations, which sort of expand outwards and backwards in standing waves. And their representations are high pressure and low pressure waves, and, and high pressure waves on the surface of the Earth appear linearly. Uh, and that's where we find the alignments of the energy lines. So these these type five lines suddenly started appearing in that sense, um, not all at once, but uh, they came in sequences. And the last one, the sixth one, um, was the one that crossed the states, uh, which was particularly interesting uh, where that went through. Um, and I have people on both sides of the states who who, uh, who who are regularly checking that. So if we talk about what happened since 2017, well, since then we've had some extra widening of the, of the smaller lines. Um, we also found that the four times a year that these energies all, because the energy lines all have a slight side to side movement. And this is a frequency which is governed by the uh, particular sort of makeup of that inner core. The inner core's transducer has that sort of controlling effect over what frequencies it puts out and the gaps where there are no frequencies. Uh, but four times a year, we found that all of these lines moved exactly in harmony, reaching one edge at the same time and back the other edge at the same time. And that lasted for about half a day back in 2006, 2007, when we first started looking at it. But um, since 2017, that harmony time had now uh, stretched to one and a half days and then three days. And it's increasing. And the last one was around 24 days long. So if you've got four harmony days a year, each now 24 days long and getting longer, there's a point which when each harmony day will be 96 days long. And that's all year round. And you can sort of extrapolate that. And it, and it looks as though that uh, is a time that's going to be reached in uh, December 2024. Which I know now, is, is that a, lengthening happening before the time of the equinoxes or solstices or afterwards? Well, the, the the first thing to say is that these harmony times were always exactly starting one day before the equinoxes and the solstices, That's which, which 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 really had me confused for a few years and, until serendipitously, if you like, or, or through synchronicity, I was prompted to understand the Tikufa, which is the uh, ancient Hebrew holy days, uh, and, and the literal translation of Tikufa is uh, the last. Uh, day of the cycle and it, it seemed to be introduced to, to, linked to the last day of the sun cycle uh, so the last day of the sun cycle was always the, the day before the first day and the first day is always solstice and the equinoxes so for some reason that ancient hebrew holy day which would have been known about in the bronze age and and, and, and in stone age people were, were just handed down there's that's where the times when these lines uh, at these sacred sites all came into this double torus from being being a lovely column of energy, it collapsed. It was such a strong vortex in the middle that it collapses that into a double torus. And of course, with a double torus, you've got two, two vortexes, or cones and tips, to, and you've got a different energy configuration. And but as soon as you've got that, that double torus now is very similar to the human double torus of energy. And now you've got a chance of, well, two double toruses, you can, you can get them to resonate. And, and we know from uh, vortex technology with copper rings spun around in, in vortex coils in different ways. If you put a frequency in one and a frequency in the other, which is exactly the same, it creates resonance and you get amplification effects and all that sort. So we know that it happens physically with the electromagnetic energy. Well, if human energy, human energy and, and the Earth's energy, when you create sounds and you meditate the right way, either chanting or, or you, you're playing instruments, if you get the right frequency, which is a higher harmonic of the base frequencies of these very low vibrations, that creates resonance where all the all the, the octaves, all the Pythagorean fifths just start vibrating. That seems to that seems to really clarify the connection between our conscious mind and our subconscious mind and it gives us a, a, a closer link if you like to the universal consciousness where, where communication with uh, other beings and other worlds and, and um, other other subconscious constructs that we can come across that can help us uh, become more, more easily done so and i think there's a lot more because these these particular um 
sacred sites are also known as portals uh, and gateways. Uh, and when you look at the ancient cultures and, and, and uh, for, for instance, in, in the Quero Indians in, in Peru, the, these, these sacred sites were always known as the gateways of the ancestors, mm-hmm. the gateways of the gods. And we know from from the different sort of nodes and vortex configurations, it's quite kind of like, well, these are places where you could communicate with beings from different worlds of, of spirit. Um, and, and as soon as I say worlds of spirit or matter frequency worlds, you kind of, kind of keep thinking I've got to go to, to the science, but to, to, it all sounds a bit strange unless there's a sort of scientific structure to it. But I, I, and I, 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 as for other changes, yes. Um, uh, and we'll get to the science, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But can you talk a little bit about some of the experiences that you've had or seen with the groups that you take to meditate at these sites during those harmonic periods? Yeah. Um, the, the, there's some lovely experiences where we, we do three 15-minute sessions of uh, meditation. Uh, the first one is to connect with the area and just uh, ask if there's any information we need to be given that we, that we need to perhaps carry out as part of a group at that location. And, and the second one is uh, carrying out those instructions or sending love out into the world or with any particular intent that's come through. And the third one is is we uh, send uh, loving, healing energy to uh, anyone personal that we know. So it, it could be time for, for asking for help yourself. So that, but in between each one, there's there's a few minutes where we, we sit and and we stand and discuss what came through. And one of the earliest signs is, 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 is lovely experiences where uh, there'll be people who say something and it's shared. They've, they've, they've experienced the same visions, the same voices as other people. Uh, say the same things have come through. Often, uh, I'll give you an example. There was a young son, uh, a father and son came along. He was you know, three and eight, nine years old. And he, he joined in after the first. He said he, he described what he saw and the colors and it, what it was doing. And about a minute later, there was another lady from the other side of the circle who hadn't heard the boy describe exactly the same thing that he did. And, and oh, so he he just went completely. He, he his whole feedback on that he wasn't just making it up was just great to see for him. But but some of the more visible things are. Uh, I mean, we get lovely, lo- lovely sort of uh, nature interactions. That that's the, that's mm-hmm. that's been a, a wonderful thing and, and a reoccurring uh, theme when people talk about what happens to them. Uh, at, at at these uh, sites, for instance, there's, a, there's a, some friends I know who, who have a, a circle, and they go up there uh, in southern Montana, and it's up on a hill. And this is quite a large sort of area of land that they have, and and it was misty, completely misty. And they went up there and and started meditating, and after about two or three minutes, they were joined by a, a group of wild horses. Just appearing oh, out of the mist. Beautiful. You can just imagine the, the horses just appearing and just standing there out of the mist. Then, then very similarly, we we, we had uh, two meditations now in, in Stanton Drew, which is the second largest stone circle in, in Britain. And it's very, very well unknown. It's just south of Bristol, but um, we had about ninety people there on the on the last two occasions we were there, and on each time. Uh, well, the first time we 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 closed our eyes for the first meditation, there were there were bullocks all over in the field, and when we opened our eyes after the first meditation, they literally had made a complete ring around us, and they were just totally silent, looking inward on us. And then this, this, the last time we were there, the, the, the farmer had left the gates open, and literally they saw us in meditation, and charged down. And we had dogs and little children in the in the in the thing. And they charged down towards us. And I thought, oh, okay, we'll just see what happens. <laughs> and, and by by the by the second meditation, there were four or five cows lying down just outside our ring, just sitting there mm-hmm. being with us. And uh, other people were saying that uh, there's a connection with insects and birds and and and, and flocks coming over us. That something happens. And and the the really interesting thing about this is that they're not coming to join us. 
they're coming to help us. Ah, beautiful, Rory. The, the, the animals are drawn to, to what we're trying to do in a way that they, they know they're here to help. And yeah. it, it's not about us experiencing mm-hmm. this is this is something where the, the, the animal kingdom are waiting for us to almost wake up. Yes, I mean you I mean, you you I'm sure there's lots of uh, experiences we each have individually uh, in nature when we meditate and, and um, I'm guessing you you would have come across some of these too. Oh absolutely I've I've had the same experience and I feel so um deeply that the plants are trying to heal us and the animals are trying to guide us because we're the ones that are out of balance. We're the ones that need to come. And and I love that image you use of our coming into resonance, our coming back into harmony with the energies of the earth and the energies of the other realms. That's really, I think, what's critical in this time as we're moving into the Aquarian age and into coming back into a remembrance of who we are and who we're meant to be. But you're in such a profound way uh, describing how people can come into resonance with those energies at those sites and be transformed by it. Yes, I think these experiences are are helping them um... It, 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 there's an element of awareness which is growing, but it's bigger than just awareness. There's, a, there's an expression the veil between the worlds are coming down. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the interesting thing there is that kind of gives you the impression that it's something that's going to happen for, to us, but it's not. These veils of the worlds coming down is something happening within us. Mm-hmm. It's actually our range of perceptions that are growing. Yes. Yes. So our 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 in, in increased awareness through these experiences is, is is a link to the connection and the resonance we've got that extends the range of our perceptions so that we can see these other realities. Should we step into that position of doing that? So is that it, it's stepping into that uh, heart centeredness heightens the awareness, widens the perceptions, and that's when we've got that greater communication. And that's the journey we're going on. So it's not anything that's going to happen to us. It's going to happen within us. But it's the recognition that the universe is, is helping us to do this that, that I think is drawing people without them really realizing it until they start awakening to that experience. And they think, wow, I'm not making it all up. There's something really here, real here. And I'm feeling drawn to experience it more and more. And it's just it it's borne out, I mean, by the numbers that we're getting now, these these uh, meetings. And and that's that's been wonderful. Yeah. We're- oh, it's so beautiful, Rory. And I think you're describing not only how that shift comes uh, from within us and our connecting with the heart, but it also feels to me from a neuropsychological perspective, we're needing to become more right brain to balance our overemphasis on left brain dominance, especially in the last 4,000 years, because I I truly believe ancient cultures felt these energies and were were much more in tune with them when when they were right brain dominant. And I feel like part of the tragedy of uh, the shadow side of this last 4,000 years and our being left brain dominant is the level of disconnection we've gotten into and how and and this leads us into the science discussion how we've become so focused on seeing reality from a scientific reductionistic materialistic perspective instead of realizing the larger interconnectedness of everything and the energies that are within us and around us Absolutely, and, and, and you rightly mentioned the science, but within that science is something which is fascinating, and that's the cycles within cycles, and, and there's a rhythm to the universe, and, and the, the, the galaxies move around in spiral. Everything works in this sort of way, and so um, you, you talk about the left brain and right right brain balance, and, and uh, the individual consciousness is is one aspect of this, but it, of the cycle. And Steiner talks about moving to group consciousness, but the, 
there's a very real need to retain what we've learned from individual consciousness and, and, and not just the bad, but the, but the good too. And as we bring that, with our consciousness seeded with that knowledge, we move into the next cycle of group consciousness where that's then shared with everybody. So we can look back in a negative way, but we can look back in a positive way. So we, there was a, there was absolute necessity because that's yes. where we're here for learning, growing and developing. But now it's that, that surrender to the, to the, the coming back to it again and uh, group consciousness and uh, how we do that is, 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 is the nature of, of, uh, of the game of understanding right now. Uh, but um Oh, so, beautifully so, said, Rory. Yes. So, so that brings us back to the science of, of, of what really are we are we at, and, and um, don't know how to begin this one. But uh, if we, if we <laughs> but 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 essentially, just dive in. <laughs> you, you, you can look at it being described in a variety of different ways by different groups of people over the time. They knew there were cycles, the yugas. Uh, there was never a specific time put on the yugas, but there was always a yoke between the yugas, the transition period, and then you've got Steiner with his epochs. You've got the, the, the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth ages talking about. Uh, there's there's a, lo a, a lot of indications. processional cycle. Yes, the processional cycle, 24-odd thousand years. That can be split into 12,000 years. And um, again, the, the, there's a transition between the epochs as well. Uh, and that, in a way, links a little bit to the uh, to the galactic current sheet cycles that we see, uh, where um, and I, I have spoken about this before for, for, for your listeners that haven't mentioned it, there's the the earth moves around the sun. And the sun has something called the heliospheric current sheet. It's a thin, wavy uh, sheet of electromagnetism. And, and we pass through it every eight to 10 days. And it takes us about two minutes to pass through it. So it exists. It, it's, it's, you can actually measure it on instruments. Um, but this galactic uh, center of the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, um, that too has a galactic current sheet. Same thing, it's just a lot bigger and a lot wider. And it's looking like we move through that every 12,000 years. And it takes us 200 years to pass through it. And since it's made up of uh, plasma, dust, and cosmic energy, it has an effect on everything. Uh, and mo most people who've, who've, who've come across this have, have heard just the physical effects, um, how it disrupts um for instance, Saturn's storms or, or the Mars earthquakes, as it has effect on, on as, as these uh, electromagnetic energies increase because we're coming towards it. I suspect that we started the transition in 2017 when we got the line started to get wider. And uh, with the waves that come through, we're getting these extra bursts of energy uh, and the lines are widening. In fact, the, 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 you asked earlier a question about the emperor dragons and uh, we we have uh, the emperor dragons in some place, places in Europe now. I have friends in Holland that have mapped them over a kilometer wide, uh, and the one in the states, the last one, which is which is different from the other type five lines. This is the one line which has got differences all over, but that one is now being mapped at over two miles wide. Wow, that is that is a huge increase. And, and in addition to that, though, it, the intensity is such that. We're now getting, uh, I'm going back to answer a previous question, but the, we're getting things called shadow lines. Now, shadow lines are, uh, we know about from, from when we, when we uh, look for water underground, uh, the vibration from where the water is, kind of like we pick up at the, cent at the surface, but we can also pick up a, a, a channel either side of where the main water channel is. So it's a, like a shadow channel either side. Mm -hmm. And it has a, has a relevance to the depth of where the water is when you find the shadow water lines. And it's, again, vibration bounces up and down off the different density contrasts. If you think of seismic waves, they go up and down and bouncing all the different density contrasts. Well, the the energy, the type five ember dragons, they, these are very low frequency vibrations too. So they, they hit the surface and they bounce back and then they go back out again. So we're now finding either side of the emperor dragons there are shadow emperor dragons so that's also adding to the widening effect but, is that so, almost like compression waves um 
that that they are in, in that sense uh yeah compressional waves from from from, from um it, 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 it if, you, if you think about uh sound hitting a cliff and coming back okay it's reverberations it's, it's, yeah. it's the high pressure the high pressure element of your sound hits the cliff and it comes back so that that is a compressional front that goes along and back and comes off of the surface so there's this but with with a, with a spherical emanation from the inner core, they're sort of spherical waves, and they bounce backwards and forwards all the time, which is causes them causes them to be standing waves, and and that's why you've got this two way directional source of flow energy flow energy when you look at the bands within the lines. So there's flows in both ways, so there's a predominant direction in one way or the other way, and that 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 takes us onto another way of of looking at, at um, what we observe with these energy lines. So. If I come back now to the the galactic current sheet and, and the increasing amount of energy is coming through, um, uh, this happens roughly every 12,000 years, an increase in cosmic energy. Now, cosmic energy, we know mutates mutate cells. We know it has an effect on the heart. And Roland McCratty at the Heart Math Institute's done great work on that, with looking at the, the coherence and resonance effect of of cosmic energy and hearts. hearts. So, what, what's happening is that uh, for those people who are accepting it and surrendering it, you can feel this in your heart, mm -hmm. uh, and something's being switched on. So it, there's there is an activation going on within us. Should we choose to accept it and understand it, or should we just choose to go completely mad because we don't know what's going on? So this is this is where, to a degree, we have a choice. We have to experience it and, and take choices as to what's going on. But it's a big cycle within a, within smaller cycles and smaller cycles, and, and we're we're at the, at the cusp of a big cycle right now. And, and that's borne out with the astrology, which I know you know more about, to moving into you know, Aquarius. Well, and. From that astrological perspective, as you know, the processional cycle is one of my areas of specialty, and it, it's been known since ancient times that we go through these 12,000-year um, periods at the midpoint of the processional cycle and the end of one, beginning of a new one, where there are these significant shifts in consciousness and earth changes because of those shifts that are happening and where we are in the galaxy. and. As you and I were talking about before we got online, I think the Aquarian age is so much about reconnecting with the living energies of the universe and that awareness that everything is energy and everything is interconnected. But it does mean a radical paradigm shift in how we look at reality, how we understand ourselves and the cosmos. So I'd love for you to talk more about that because your view is so helpful in terms of helping us move into that new paradigm. Well, I, I, again, if you talk about my view, but my I, I, my views are formed by everyone else's. You know, I read, I read and read and study, and I synchronicity delightfully hands me relevant information at the right time. And, and, I, and we were mentioning before about Elizabeth H's work with uh, a book initiate, initiate uh, and, and um, she's talking about the move into the Aquarius, the age of the water bearer. But it's 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 a wavy. It's a time when we're going to understand the waves that drive and form and, and, and matter. And uh, that has an amazingly uh, strong ability to, de to destabilize as well as to, to create uh, new dynamics. And uh, we, we talked before about uh, the need to have a sort of controlling aspect to this. So I don't know if you wanted to sort of go down that route of... of, of of the fact that Leo is is opposite to Aquarius and and, ha and plays a part in that control and the, and the, you had mentioned the shadow side of Leo and the other side which is Elizabeth H talks about uh, the dictators who are needed at this time to help others go through this difficult time of Aquarius and um, and I'll, I'll, I'll go back to the science behind it perhaps in in, in a moment but the the dictators can be read. In different ways, whether they are centralized group of small cabal who want world domination, but if we let them, or they are people who are stepping 
outside of of this uh, environment, which Steiner, Steiner talks about it, 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 as well as uh, a time when empathy will be felt by everybody. So we will feel other people's pain. We will feel the hunger in others as our hunger. Uh, and in order to, to, to help other people at this point, because a lot of people will need help because they will be unable to cope with this, uh, this very different change in the way their mind is, is being a, a affected, we need to move to a form of heart-centeredness to, 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 to send compassion, to be able to guide. And I think the, 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 this is when the children of light, if you like, are going to come forward to be the great guides for the many small communities that will be coming in a decentralized, interconnected world that we need to start working towards. Because if we don't, there's we don't want a small group of, of, of megalomaniac, uh, centralized uh, planners that want world domination who, who will grab the opportunity. And I think this is the the opportunity they see, which is why they're, we're seeing the uh, the actions they're taking right now. Uh, and and we can't sit back and do nothing, but we mustn't enter their game. We must we must say, okay, this is the same opportunity. We we know small groups of people can make a difference. We just need to do this locally uh, with with a spiritual connection. Uh, and, and it's about moving to heart centeredness, allowing uh, this group consciousness to, to. Well, I think I think the, the first thing is knowing that the move to group consciousness is happening, and not to worry so much about the the effects on, on your mind. That that if you surrender to it and go with that flow, you will be embraced, and you will then move to that ability to to help and guide others. So that that's what fascinates me, along with the fact that we've been given so many clues in these universal prophecies, which is what I talk about in Grail mm -hmm. as well, because just going through those uh, illuminates the journey that's been made before, that that's been seen yes. in the visions, um, and it's it's been it's been a wonderful experience going through these universal properties with groups, because everyone in a group has an individual perspective and this is one of the wonderful things that, that, that group consciousness is not where everyone thinks and feels the same thing it's very much the, the power of individuals and in, in the recognizing our uniqueness as, as our role we play within groups and as, as what's most important in the group and when, when you work with groups on these things and you hear other people's uh, insights that come through you think i have no way ever ever going to to have picked that up if it hadn't been within a group i i totally agree i mean i've i've done sacred circles for over 16 years and what i find and i love that ancient indigenous understanding of the council format and then when you come into sacred circle with that honoring of the the center of the circle that's our connection to the earth and cosmos and spirit each person in the circle carries some wisdom or truth that's needed by the whole and that as we share that we really feel that way in which our understanding expands and becomes more than the sum of the people there and it is opening to that connection with spirit, which I think is so profound in what you're talking about with these meditation circles at these sacred sites. It's allowing us to take that expansive consciousness to a whole new level okay. and, and to come more from the heart. And just to follow up on the Leo piece, I would reframe it not as dictators, but um, the Royal Star Regulus, the heart of Leo the Lion, is about leading from the heart with courage, with integrity to be of service. And that's, I think, the difference between the guides and leaders that will help us in this time of shift versus those trying to take control from a place of ego and exploitation rather than being of service. That's that's very well said. Definitely, um, I, I, I used the word um, dictators because that was what came up in Elizabeth H's book. But but yeah. you, you you've explained it far better. So uh, and 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 therein lies the choice for us as well. Yeah, yeah. So, but um, uh, what 
Where do we get to before that? I'm just <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and you're talking about it, I think this piece is so important about how it is shifting us into group consciousness. A lot of the people that I talk to that I do readings with are feeling that increasing empathy, are feeling that increasing blurring of the boundaries of their own awareness and increasing connection and sensitivity to the collective consciousness and telepathic capacities with animals as well yeah. as attuning yeah. to other people and th those are amazing gifts but it also can be very uh, as you said destabilizing for some people it, i mean i is. know for example i feel like often my dreams now are not my dreams that i'm picking up on other people's feelings or experiences and and now I'm processing it in my own consciousness. So we have to, I think, be aware of how those shifts are affecting us and how to stay grounded in alignment in the midst of it. Yeah, uh, I've been a part of a dream group for several years now, and I'm just completely staggered at how we're sharing uh, a causally connected synchronicities between members and having similar dreams. And, and, and it's by coming together and sharing dreams that we're beginning to learn, understand and learn. But this is nothing new. The Hopi used to do this. Yes. You know, they yes. used to share that. And, the and, Australian and, Aborigines. Yes. 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 And, and, and coming slightly back to really what you said, the, the this opportunity and the challenge for, for me is, is all about surrender and, and to totally getting away from your ego. A lot of people think they're in this game. Uh, it is a bit of a game because it's a challenge. <laughs> but they they can't lose their ego they think they haven't got it but it's ingrained and and uh the challenge actually comes because everything that's not right is going to be challenged you know yes. steiner talks about the beasts as we cross the abyss and it's and and you need the fire of truth and the courage that you talk about and 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 the lack of uh of your own uh, involvement you need that that uh, is is the way forward because if you haven't got that just like Jung was challenged on his journey you know and, the, and he, he writes about it in his red book you know they will mercilessly come after you again and again and again mm -hmm. if you're if you're not looking at the true nature of reality they're trying to help you do that so if you're left with that self in you that part one part of you then, then that surrender is not complete and then you're going to be challenged going through it so that embracing this going with this flow is, is, is just like you're saying it's you become a servant to, mm. to, the, to the course and you, they aren't your thoughts you're you're picking up on everything and it, and it's a challenge for some to, to surrender especially fearful people because people who have fear put up their defenses in their ego big time for politicians and and very wealthy people they have much less, more greater fear of loss loss of power loss of wealth and that that then gives them even bigger egos and they've got bigger challenges i mean it's the old, it's, it's the old saying you know it's, it's easier for a camel to I don't know, i'll get this right but passing through the eye of the needle you know, the rich yes. man on, on the camel it's in, it, i forget exactly what it was but it's uh <laughs> i mean the eye of the needle was a small gate inside the jerusalem gates you know and of course it was impossible to take a camel through the small gate you have to open the pit but it was just the impossibility. It was much harder for someone with, uh, with more to lose. But um, so yes, that's the challenge. Um, well, and I love I love your image, Rory, of surrender. And it to me, it reminds me of that incredible Hopi story about uh, let go of the shore. Don't cling to the branches on the shore. Be in the current. Let the current carry you. And you know, I think. It is such a profound time of transition and transformation, and we don't know what the destination is. So it's so important to surrender to the currents, the, the energies that are transforming us. And I think when people get caught in fear, they not only get caught in their ego, but wanting to cling to the old familiar patterns because they think that gives them some sense of security, but actually... That is what's going to create more turmoil in this time. It, it is, but there's this there's a wicked little side to this because it, it it's it, you're going to get given what you need, and it ain't always going to be good. 
<laughs> so so by the idea of being taken along with the flow as though it's going to be a nice gentle ride no no you're going to be knocked around until you've changed this is a yeah. transformation period and and i love the one of the expressions that we find in in uh, being taught to jung is is, is the, the the great secret is the love never ends so the capacity to love and give love never ends so if you want that capacity you have greater and greater challenges so it, it, this journey is is a one of, of it's like the dark night of the soul with the hero's challenge, isn't it? You're going to constantly be pressured, and, and once you've gone through one cycle, you go through the next and the next because love never ends. Well, it's it's the process of initiation, and it's also yeah. the process of that ancient understanding of alchemy. Yeah. We feel like we're in the cauldron, but it's burning away what no longer serves us to help us more and more be in the true gold of who we are and move into that higher consciousness but i think when we can have that orientation that the challenges aren't problems they're actually supporting us in that transformation then we can work and this is how i talk with people a lot about these planetary transits you know that are so powerful in this time they're trying to guide us in how to be working with the shifts more consciously and not resisting them or fearing them and a big positive from this is you're never going to give it be give, you're never going to be given a challenge which is too great for you because that defeats the purpose of life and growth yeah why would they do that and then you always got the help the help is there if you need it uh, and to get better at this is to is to surrender be intuitive move in that state of awareness and and allow yourself to be guided and I think that's where we're at now as well. That, uh, that, that, that. And, and the other interesting thing as well, coming back to what's changed, sorry, on, on the energetic front, uh, that, that when when people ask me about where can I experience these, these type five emperor dragons, you know, I'm going to these places, can you point a direction to go? And apart from showing them the, the map on the sites map on the sacred network, uh, I, I say to them that when you go there, you may not find and sense these energies. These these type five emperor dragons are different. They're not like mm. finding the other lines. You have to specifically purify your thoughts and prepare more so than before and completely surrender. And the more you surrender, the more power, power you will feel. Mm. And, and everybody comes back and says, goodness, you know, I, I didn't find them at all to begin with. And then I realized I had to do this and this. And then it just hit me and it grew and grew and grew. So oh, that, that 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 is becoming a very common experience that I'm finding. And and I have to say that the these harmony times now are becoming more and more dominated with those energies. And it, it's exactly that experience that you now have to, to take with you when you go to the, the meditations at all of these sites. The more you surrender, the more power that comes through. And it is a it is a very delicate, which is why I think some people describe it as feminine. It's a very delicate, uh, heart-centered um, feeling. Mm. Um, but you know it when you've got it. And can you <laughs> describe a little bit more, Rory, how different the emperor dragon line is that goes across the United States compared to the others? Yeah, initially it was um, uh, because of the side-to-side -side movements. Um, we, 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 the, 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 the type four lines we found had a a 36 hour and a 24 hour so it's like 18 hours one way 18 hours the other way and the other one was 12 hours this way 12 hours that way so the michael and mary lines which we know about quite a bit in the uk mm -hmm. that's a 12 hour one way 12 hour the other way but, but in the first five type five lines had 24 hours one way 24 hours the other way and that was like 48 hour frequency which is like you know point naught but it, it's like nine or ten microhertz very very small but when the the year the last one arrived uh, that crossed the states, that actually had a seventy two hour frequency. It was the only one that had a much. Now these frequencies are are not a function of the source of this energy, which is galactic, but the the frequencies are, are a function of the nature of the transducer, which is the inner core. So its size and shape and density will take all energy coming into it, but it'll pump out the frequencies 
that it can and because i think because the last last source which was probably the center of our galaxy was so strong and so powerful it pumped out an even an even deeper or, or lower frequency uh, and um that's what made it different and i think that one line is the one that's been affected more than anything else because we're getting into this uh, uh, galactic current sheet and its energies are are becoming much much greater so we're we're right now this harmony time is always dominated at the 72 hour frequencies so in in, in the past we found that the, the the larger lines would slow down as would, would would get faster and and come into harmony with the smaller energies and as the time went on we found that the smaller lines slowed down and and began to match the the, the type four lines and then so there's an influence on each one so now all the small lines which literally was like uh, six hours one way six hours the other way they they really slow down and they go further and they they do that whole 72 hour cycle you know 36 wow. hours that is that the dominance of that extra uh energy that's coming through uh that that's um and i i need to come back to, to just say that just because i'm talking about very low frequencies of vibration this is linked in Ron Pearson's series by being at the subquantum level. And that's where he, 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 he discovered that a universal consciousness must have arisen through some brilliant mathematics called uh, exact um, uh, opposed energy dynamics, uh, which, which explained how uh, basic computation started that, that must have arisen to universe to that form of consciousness where it, it could direct waves where it wanted to direct waves. And then he found that the interacting waves caused spikes of energy, which create the illusion of particles on the large quantum level. So when I when I'm talking about waves of energy, and it also linked to this this Aquarian age as well, this this these waves are intimately connected to universal consciousness itself. So when you're tapping into these very low vibrations, it's like you're you're mainlining that universal mm. consciousness. Although the power of that is so great, our conscious minds have this sort of interface between our conscious mind and, our, and, and, and the universal consciousness and that interface is a protective nature so we, we, we would be blown away by the power of this but i think that relies in the realms of the subconscious so learning to work with the subconscious mind as the greats as you know uh, like like steiner and, and jung began to they were worked with the mm -hmm. inner visualization they began to look at the subconscious um uh, it, it's that connection which begins to help us understand how we create a, a firmer connection between uh, all the different worlds and, and, and with us. Or, or, and or tied, yeah. yeah, and tied into that, Rory, I mean, you, you've talked before about the importance of how we need to detox and cleanse at the physical level to be more and more open to those energies. And I also feel like it's critical that we heal at the emotional level, because otherwise our subconscious is still caught up in the turmoil or the trauma of our past and that can um so when we experience these energies that can be even more destabilizing so i think it's critical that we're all on a path of healing on all levels to be able to open more and more to this cosmic consciousness and would pearson also i mean you've talked about his view of the electric universe would that also fit with some of Robert Temple's work around 99% of the universe is plasma and that basically we're in a sea of cosmic consciousness, that we are the anomaly being in physical form? Uh, uh, I've not fully looked at Robert uh, Temple's work, but... I understand he's got a, another book coming out with the science that he's explaining some of this. So I'm, I'm waiting to see that. But but from what I do understand, uh, and, and compared to Ron Ron Pearson's work, there there's an aspect which which is similar in that if the universal consciousness is at the sub quantum level, and it's 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 creating intelligence in everything. Where, where you've got accumulations of certain things, there is going to be accumulations of intelligence. 
So if it's creating matter, you know, so it, then there's going to be intelligence in that matter. Uh, there's there seems to be more neurons in our heart, in our, our head, and, mm-hmm. and, and in, our, in our gut. And that that would appear to uh, in, increase that number of neurons to cre- create something we would call a mind, a heart mind, a gut mind, and a head mind. Well, if you've got that same concentration of matter, maybe in those ionized plasma clouds, that's in a cohesive enough way, that is sufficient for a, a, a demo, demonstrably showing that there's a collection of intelligence that could reside in that in that mass. That, that's not to say that is where intelligence is. Because I think yeah. intelligence exists in everything, but it, it, it's perhaps chosen to to create a region which can maybe direct or it, it, its own thoughts and waves where it wants to as well. Because this is something which is uh, constantly uh, it, it's constantly being uh, portrayed. It's it, it's it, with these particles with every wave they they come and they go and they come and they go. So this isn't consciousness which just creates the world and that's it it's constantly in creation mm-hmm. and and there's a grand design that's going on and and you can just look at the nature and the way that it's so interwoven that you know it must happen so uh, the, put that together with these large cycles put that together with the, the constellations you were talking before and, and and the thinking now what we hear in the prophecy is that is that we individually have to experience life in all these epochs. Yes. And, and in each of those, we have different experiences and different challenges. So all back through our past lives, through a long period of time, you, you talk about a, a purification and the need for that. Well, this is this is the whole cycle of our lives throughout the whole of these constellations. And we may have to do this at least once or twice. To be able to, for a group of us to reach that point where we can evolve our consciousness to a heightened state of awareness such that we can become the next group of people that can help others through the next through the next yoke, the next transition. Yeah. Wow, that's that's really powerful, Rory. And you know, it does speak to, as you were saying earlier, the importance of honoring these different paradigms and and ways of consciousness that we move through in these cycles. Like again, my work on the processional cycle is looking at the shifts in our consciousness as we go through each astrological age. But as you were saying earlier, each age has its gift, but each age also has its shadow side if we get out of balance with the larger harmonic of the whole cycle. And I think that's kind of in part, the correction we're in right now is we needed to explore that left brain separate sense of our own experience as part of our learning, but we need to not get mired in that in a way that pulls it out of balance. Now we're meant to move into that group consciousness. And I do think that part of the Aquarian age is holding that understanding of our individual uniqueness and diversity in the context of co-creating community together. And then it's it's a whole other paradigm that we're moving into. And it could be that our opportunity is existing in these transitions rather than in the actual epochs themselves. You mean the time for the most transformation can be in the transition yes. time? Yes. Yes, that makes the chance, total the chance sense. to evolve. The, 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 that is when we move back into group consciousness. So to be able to to assimilate everything by connecting with everything and to, and, and to bring all those past lessons together, uh, so that we can take those next steps. Uh, and and I don't think everyone's doing it. And this is possibly why we're seeing this separation in the world today. Uh, there's uh, uh, not. If everyone's on a journey, there's maybe a small group of people who are on a on a on a bigger journey to move into that point where we're looking to help others. And the ones we help in twelve thousand years' time will be looking to help others because they've been through it before. So it's like we've been through this before. we 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 we, we were helped. Just like others are helping us now, there's this constant uh, 
it was like heaven needs more angels. <laughs> we, 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 we have to aspire to becoming a higher being. Whether we're ever going to make it this time or next, we don't know. But that that, that brings us back to that, that that whole experience that we're on and, uh, and, and trying to understand it uh, and then to, re- to surrender and release to try and learn more. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I wish I could understand it better but but it, it's now come down to a practical aspect we can't do this individually we've got to do it in groups and, and surrender to our intuition and, and allow us to be taught and this is why they, they call these sacred sites uh, in various countries around the world they're distance learning centers mm, beautiful so we go there to learn and we don't need to be there all the time but we can we can go there and that's that's what i'd invite everybody to 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 look at to go to the sacred network site you know, sign up. It's registered. It's free. Um, you, hopefully, there's some sites nearby to you uh, which you can you can perhaps go and visit. Uh, certainly, form groups. Uh, I, I know there's there's quite a number of groups. People that we've nearly got a thousand members now, which is not bad for a short period of time. So we need to get that up. You can you can book events. Um, you can join events. You can start events uh, at wherever you want, including at the sacred sites. So I really would, would would say if you want to be part of this journey, uh, you need to be at these sites in groups and receive your next download, if you like, and instructions on how, how you have to do. Because at the end of the day, we're still learning, all of us. There's no one going to be telling us what to do. And, and um, we desperately need to understand better. So understand as much as we can anyway. The Sacred Network is such a, a beautiful site, Rory, and I, I love, you know, getting on that site and seeing how different groups are forming to support each other locally as well as um, long distance in how we can hold and work with this profound transition time. And it it, it feels like as we form these communities, as as we were talking about earlier, we have the support of these cosmic energies. We have the support of the earth energies, of the animals, of the plants. And I do believe the more of us that can open to the new paradigms and the higher consciousness, the more it's going to impact the collective consciousness you know, that whole understanding of morphogenic fields, that not only are we taking responsibility for being on our own journey of initiation and transformation, but we can support the collective shift if we hold that energy and support others in that process. Yeah, I, I thank you for those words. And I would just probably add one more part to that is to... I think we mentioned it before that the universe is waiting for us to do this. We're 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 kind of like the the last cog in in, in the whole wheel of of cogs or whatever. But, but, but that the world the universe is waiting for us to do this. It's like we're the last group to do this, and that and that that that's including all all things. You know, you, the Earth itself going through its journey of of, of, of upgrading its consciousness. This is all. Because we're all one, and and and, and that's that's the really the, the bringing coming back to that unity consciousness. It's like we're this one last element to yeah. You know. And if we can work this in this healing way, then we can become galactic citizens. We can really be more connected to the other energies and beings in the cosmos. Yeah, and I guess that's that starts more challenges and more lessons. So <laughs> <laughs> love never ends. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Rory, for for being in this conversation, and thank, thank you, you for for the profound work that you're doing, and for the way in which you're supporting the understanding of how these earth energies can be guiding us in the healing and transformational process, and supporting us in forming these new ways of being in community. So thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And blessings to all of you. 